The following is a presentation of the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. As conference play spins into week two, matchups begin heating up. Today, two of the more explosive teams face off in Clemson as the number 25 Tigers battle the high-flying Cardinals from Louisville. So sit back and buckle up as we tip off the second week of the 2018 season with a rumble in Little John right here on the ACC Network. just about everywhere, but the locals are coming in to watch a red-hot team. The Clemson Tigers have won nine in a row. Deng Adele and the Louisville Cardinals hope to get in the way of that, while Dante Grantham and company look to continue to try to find ways to win as they have so far in 2017 and 18. It's Louisville and Clemson, a couple of teams, each looking to stay unblemished so far in ACC play. And hi, friends, and welcome aboard, along with Dan Bonner, Pete Gannity with you. So a week ago, here in Little John, Clemson got a victory that put them into the top 20 25. Louisville thinks if they can get a win today, they'll do the same. But let's face it, Dan, the Clemson Tigers are the surprise so far in the ACC. Pete, I don't think there's any question about that. They were picked to finish near the bottom of the ACC standings, but here we are, second week of the season starting there at the top, and I think a win today just legitimizes everything they've done. That takes us to our progressive, innovative play. Our innovative play presented by Progressive Insurance, your first-round draft pick for car insurance. And, Dan, it's about Clemson and what they've been doing offensively. Uh, Clemson likes to get the ball inside. They sometimes drive it to the basket, but here you see the screen and roll situation occurs and Mark Donnell sees the opening and takes it to the basket. People talk about the Tigers and their ability to shoot the three, but really the strength of this Clemson team is getting the ball inside. Here's another situation. Everybody from the defense is looking at the ball. Nobody is looking at the baseline. And the Clemson Tigers, as I say, very strong inside, but Honest Mahmoud, one of the leading shot blockers in the country, leads the ACC. Going to be a little bit more difficult for the Tigers to get it inside today. He's among the top five in blocks in the land. Louisville as a team is number two in the nation. Each of these teams averaging close to 80 points a game. We expect that kind of battle today in Little John Coliseum. Him, a battle of the Cardinals and the Clemson Tigers, a high noon shootout, and our tip-off is coming up next. ACC basketball is being brought to you by Food Lion, raising standards without raising prices. How refreshing. By New York Life, with the right guidance, everyone can be good at life. By Coyote Tractor. And by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. All the pause leads you right here to Little John Coliseum, a matchup of teams that have combined for 24 wins. Our Food Lion starting lineups. Well, a Louisville team that in a year when they certainly needed a glue guy as a player both on and off the court, Quentin Snyder has stepped up there. As for the Clemson Tigers, Dante Grantham's been a guy to go to for big scoring, but don't forget about Marquise Reed. Like Grantham, he recently exceeded 1,000 points in his collegiate career. So here we go, Ray Spalding for Louisville, Elijah Thomas, and we're underway here at Little John Coliseum, and... And we'll head that way to start things out. We will keep an eye inside in the early going here, Dan. Well, we mentioned before the game, Pete, that Clemson is at their best inside, and Louisville is much better driving the ball to the basket. So far this year, they haven't been a great three-point shooting team, but Quentin Snyder, the one exception to that, he can really get it and go to the goal, however. Nothing doing for Spalding. Elijah Thomas, the Tigers' top rebounder, eight and a half a game. Now, Spalding can make it from out there, but that makes him three for 12 so far on the season. Three, but Thomas to follow. Exactly what we were talking about. They take and attack the basket. The shot blockers come. Nobody blocks out. Thomas gets an easy one. Man to man for both teams to start. B.J. King, guys, they're counting on to pick up the scoring. Uh, King is a guy who can really shoot the ball. Adele had a hand in his face, and there's Grantham doing what he's done well this year, and here come the Tigers. Yeah. 
Williams, the freshman. Little baby hook, nothing doing. That could be a key matchup there. Experienced guy Thomas against Williams. Yeah, but that's what ends. that's what Thomas needs to make. Williams is not one of the shot blockers, and particularly when you're playing one-on-one -on -one against him inside, Williams needs to start score that. Thomas needs to score that basket. Spalding using the window well. He comes off a 10-point game the other night in their win against Pitt. Can't let Spalding have the ball for that length of time, that close to the basket. He's very good with both hands. He's not a great passer, so you have to make him give up the ball. Shelton Mitchell, the point guard in name, but they've got several guys who have distributed well this year. But Grantham off the feed. Active in front of the hoop. Thompson has been able to get inside. They've scored both their baskets, however, on tip-ins. Let's see if the hell ball call that Brad Brownell was desiring is made, and there you go. Give you our Ford keys of the game, presented by your Carolina Ford dealers, and those keys of the game are... Well, I think this is a very interesting game for both teams. Louisville is not the kind of team that pressures constantly as they have maybe five years ago, but they need to get some pressure on Clemson. They need to play at a relatively quick pace. And for Clemson, whether it's inside or outside, they have to find the weak spots and attack them successfully. They've done that so far here early. Thomas off the left block. See, I think Mahmoud is going to come into the game immediately because if Clemson's going inside, playing one-on-one -on -one with Williams, with Thomas in there, Williams simply can't guard it. Turnover forced by the Tigers' defense. Two so far for Louisville. And here comes Mahmoud. Almost on cue for the seven-footer, the senior originally from Cairo, Egypt. So an early four-point lead for a Clemson team. Their only win in the six games against Louisville all time came a couple of years ago in downtown Greenville when the Tigers played in that arena during that 15-16 and 16 season. This time on Mahmoud, the fine shot blocker, and there's Spalding to play well, out. A little different against with Mahmoud as opposed to Williams. King, their best outside shooter from beyond the arc. And Gabe DeVoe doing what he's done well lately, getting rebounds for the senior guard. Well, DeVoe's had an interesting season. He shot the ball. Well. He's third on the Tigers in blocked shots. So I think you can say he's done a little bit of everything. Mitchell. Tigers come into the ball game, hitting him at 37% from downtown, but not that time. And Clemson needs to make their outside shots because they're not a great offensive rebounding team. They rebound the well, ball well defensively, but they're not a great offensive rebounding team. And their race balding picks up an illegal screening foul. And we talked uh, to David Padgett before the game, and he said Spalding gets in foul trouble, but at least once every game he gets a bad foul, and that's the definition of a bad foul right there. First foul in the ball game on either side. It's Louisville's third turnover. And especially when you've got a guy who's your leading rebounder in Spalding, and he's that far from the uh, basket that happens. But uh, illegal screening is a point of emphasis for officials. Has been for a couple of years. Big guys have to be very careful. That's no, there, there. You go. There's an illegal screen, and that's against Thomas. And Thomas is also a guy who's a little bit foul prone. So he's leading rebounder now with one apiece. And just as Spalding went to the bench moments ago with his first, Thomas, you see him doing the same. And Mark Donnell. Well, this really changes the equation because Mark Donnell is not a back-to-the-basket, on-the-block, inside player. Of course, Louisville has gone with their small lineup now. Cardinals have started one out of three before that one is knocked down by Quentin Schneider. 24% beyond the arc. Well, he has shot the ball extremely well from out there over his last seven or eight games. Off to a very slow start at the beginning of the season, but he has heated up here recently. Janelle has hit six threes so far this year. Reed can knock him down off the pump. Adele pushing the tempo. That's what the Cardinals like to do. And Tigers right back at him. Mitchell pass Snyder. Clemson three for 11 so far, and they've missed a couple of point-blank range opportunities. 
Driving to the bucket, can't get the friendly roll, Dwayne Sutton. Tigers will settle the pace. Grantham for DeVoe. And those are the kind of shots I think Clemson is going to have to make today if they're going to come away with the victory. You draw the defense down around the basket and get an open three. Louisville twice as many turnovers as field goals so far. Clemson is a very, very solid defensive team. There's another turnover. A little bit too strong on that sudden feed inside. And we've got an official timeout on the court. Back and forth so far, the Tigers by one. But then is finally able to put it down and here a back to the basket power play. That's been the Clemson offense so far. They've missed three three-point shots. The interesting thing, though, is that Louisville has turned the ball over five times. Let's see the Clemson shooting. So they forced five turnovers, but they've shot the ball so poorly that they only have a one-point lead. Louisville now trying to extend the pressure. And as we saw in that sequence, Tigers, four of their six points, second chance points, a really underrated stat in the game. And since Clemson is a team that only gets about 25% of its own misses, which is well below average, those second chance points earlier are a big bonus. Grantham just inside the arc. And there's Adele with another rebound. It's hard to be a jump shooter over Anas Mahmoud. He's not only seven feet tall, he's got long arms. And believe me, everybody out there in white knows that he's the leading shot blocker in the ACC. Right, so number 24. The Clemson defending the ball right now. David Scar of Alfredo transfer just checked in. He's key to their deck. Going to drive the bucket and first lead in this ball game for the Cardinals. That's a great job by Louisville attacking the basket. Tigers nearly four minutes without points. Scar got hung up. From the baseline. Nothing doing for Danelle, but they'll get a fresh shot clock. Tigers really cold shooting the ball here early. And a Tiger team that shot 43% from the field in their first two ACC ball games of the year. Reed with a seven-footer. Mahmoud in front of him. So you can't, he's not, not going to make any of those shots. He tried to put so much arc on that ball. If Mahmoud picks you up, then Donnell has to go find an open area, particularly beyond the three-point arc, so he can shoot a jumper. So that's good defense by Grantham. Adele now working left of the lane. And star on the rebound. A lot of contested shot opportunities early for the Cardinal. Getting close to five minutes without points for Mitchell and company. Well, and they're going to be five more minutes without points if they keep trying to shoot the ball over Mahmoud. Find somebody else and shoot a jump shot over him. <laughs> <laughs> and the deflection, another turnover by the Cardinal. Scar will load it up. And who did he just shoot that one over, Pete? Yep, another big guy, but good play by Grantham to keep the ball in his hand. Not just another big guy, the same big guy. You have to say this about Mahmoud. He has been around the ball constantly on the defensive end. He has been the biggest, literally, factor in this game. He started the season around 215. They've gotten him up to 230. He's one of those guys, though, that uh, he should value the age that he is because he eats and it just all burns off. But they'd love to see even more bulk on the big fellow, but he's done great inside. Well, wait till he's 30. He won't have the problem. He won't have that problem. Now getting extended minutes after Thomas picked up that early foul. Starting center remains on the bench. DeVoe. And gets a friendly roll to take the lid off. That's a very tough shot, but it was a shot over Adele. <laughs> Mahmoud wasn't there. Finally, Clemson able to shoot over one of those towers for Louisville. Here's Sutton on the drive. Clemson has done a great job on its defensive boards. Look out. And almost, but... A little bit off timing. Here comes Snyder. 
And look at a reach in call. And dare I say so far, the whistle has not been blowing in terms of foul. Tigers have a one point lead as we head to another timeout. the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports, also streaming live now on the ACC.com and on the official ACC mobile app. And our coverage of ACC basketball being broadcast on AFN, the American Forces Network. We welcome nearly one million men and women of the U.S. Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines stationed around the globe in 175 countries and on the high seas. We thank you for your service, and we're so proud to have you on board. Hope you're enjoying our broadcast today. Hasn't exactly been an offensive explosion here early. A couple of lead changes so far, but the numbers tell us that, uh, suffice it to say, a couple of teams averaging the high 70s are well below that pace. And after Clyde Trapp picked up that foul before the break, they'll get Mark Donnell inside. Well, Brad Brunell is looking out there. His guys have already attempted 18 shots. They've got five offensive rebounds. The problem for them is they've only made four of the shots. In fact, they've only made one of their last 11 field goal attempts. So you get five offensive rebounds, you force six turnovers. Figure you're going to be ahead by more than one. Team fouls now 3-1 to one, Clemson. Mahmoud across the lane. Nice finish by the big call. And Mahmoud is another really smooth operator on the inside for Louisville. He too can use either hand. And there McMahon tips the ball away. And what do you know, a turnover against the Tigers after that Mahmoud bucket. Is first three turnovers so far on Clemson. Well, Mahmoud catches the ball inside. Donnell gets no help. Scar comes over a little bit late, and Mahmoud, again, once he gets close to the basket, he is extremely effective. That's McMahon who just forced that turnover, just checked into the game. Sutton thought about it, and he'll give it up again, and the Cardinals slowly creeping toward 10 turnovers, barely 10 minutes into this ballgame. It's got to be very frustrating for Louisville. They seem to be moving well without the ball, but they're throwing the ball to the guys in the white shirts, and that's not a good idea when you're wearing red. David Padgett, very composed fellow. Of course, he played for Louisville and is actually on the roster of a Louisville team that faced Clemson in the NIT in 06, but he sat out that ball game with an injury. But here he is as the interim head coach. Inside it goes. Elijah Thomas just checked back in, but that was not part of the plan. Thanks for now giving it up four times. He was trying to hurry up and get the ball to the basket before Mahmoud showed up. Reed. Marquise Reed among the top defenders for this Tiger team. Came in with 21 steals. Gives a little bit of life. And the Tigers move back in front. McMahon. Tell us he's a good three-point shooter. Not that time. DeVoe back door for Reed. And give who else with the seven-footer a little bit of credit that time. And Thomas Boy. disrupted. Is there something wrong with the baskets in this place? <laughs> we told you the inside would be key. We didn't necessarily think in this way. Tigers will reset. And that time on Asma Mood, at very least getting his money worth. And you see Marquis Reed, just how quick he is. Well, Clemson's defense has been the key factor for the Tigers so far. And Reed dunks the ball in. Now on the next play, Reed had a chance to lay it in and score two, but instead he tried to dunk it and missed. Louisville has done a nice job playing without fouling. You've got to keep these Clemson Tigers off the free throw line. They score a lot of points from the line. They shoot a very high percentage. 18 out of 20 free throws the other night in that close run up at BC. Thomas found success doing just that early on in this game. He so far has half a dozen points. In fact, he has registered half of the Tigers total, and they're back out to a three-point advantage. Mahmoud and Spalding both in the game at the same time, both with one personal foul, so it's probably a good idea to attack them. And now oh. Thomas is going to pick up his second. 
You mentioned we talked to the head coach of Louisville, David Padgett, and just in hearing him talk about his bigs, you just think that it might come down for Brad Brownell or Padgett. That first big guy to get those two first half fouls, what impact is that going to have on the flow? I think Thomas is extremely critical for the Clemson Tigers. They have to have him in the lineup, particularly against a team with the size of Louisville. So he is likely on the bench until the second half. McMahon tries again. He's over two since he checked in. That's a break for the Tigers. You don't double team a guy down low with McMahon standing on the outside. He usually makes that one. That was wide open opportunity. The crossover. That's what Reed does. Sets his shot up the balance any one that I've seen so far in the ACC. Excellent job. He knew the two big guys were inside. He didn't try to drive it. Great move to get open and hit the pull-up jump shot. Reed has four. The Tigers lead out to five. And the drive inside. That's my move. Their field goal for him. Well, Spalding, gee, he needs to be careful. He goes for the steal outside. DeVoe from downtown. And Donnell almost got a, excuse me, put back. That's Darius Perry, one of the freshmen for this Louisville team. He just checked in. And away from the ball, they're going to get Grantham. And that'll be five against the Tigers. Creating your own shot is a pretty big deal in the ACC. And knowing what shot to take, the pull-up jump shot in the mid-range. Not a lot of offense, but Clemson leads by three. The big thing we've been stressing is take it one day at a time. We just, every day in practice, we want to be better than we were the day before. Every game, we want to be better better than we were the game before, and we're just we're trying to have that approach each and every day. Well, in September, David Padgett, at the age of 32, was told, you're the interim head coach. It's well documented what's happened in Louisville, but here he is continuing to venture into uncharted territory, to say the least. Well, he's actually, he's got the Crash Davis thing down exactly the way a head coach should. But I, what an unbelievable situation. Two days before the start of practice, they make him the coach. He doesn't have any assistance for two weeks. <laughs> Had to build a staff, built a pretty good one. We'll talk more about that as we continue on in what, as you can tell by our score, has not been necessarily an offensive show. Shot clock down to five. And back in the game, Spalding can't finish. There's Grantham on the rebound. Well, we're on pace to have a 47 to 37 game. And, and that's going to get the reach in. And that's one thing that David Padgett was very concerned about when we talked to him before the game: is the ability of Clemson to beat you out on the perimeter and create foul situations. Again, Clemson is a team that shoots free throws very well, so you got to try to keep them off the free throw line. Dangadell just picked up his first. Louisville three team fouls. Clemson has five so far. Each of these teams likes to get it up and down the court, but has forced the other into slowing it down. DeVoe the fine. Sims, the freshman, just checked in the finish. Louisville was in his zone that time, and Clemson, after standing around and not recognizing, finally moves the ball well and gets it inside. Spalding's hand got caught up in the net, so he wasn't able to block the shot. Sims at 6'7", defending the seven-footer Mahmoud. That's the first offensive rebound that Louisville have, has gotten in this game, and they're able to convert it. Louisville's, Louisville's got to try to find a way where they don't have to play every time against the set Clemson defense. They have gotten very few easy opportunities. Your team to the line so far, and you see that these teams do get there and make it a big factor. We noted the other night against BC, that was huge for Clemson. Mitchell. And there's Perry on the rebound. Grantham didn't mean to. It works out well for Louisville. Dang with Sims coming over. And Amir Sims, a freshman out of Palmyra, Virginia, picking up his 12th block of the season. Grantham from downtown. Look at DeVoe. 13 rebounds combined the past two games, and you see why. That is some play by DeVoe. Clemson simply cannot get the three to go down. Louisville defends at 30% beyond the arc. How about one from two, says Marquise Reed. 
Six Reed, points for him. Reed has been very effective beating that first line of the defense and then being able to score from the mid-range before the big guys can get to him. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. On side and Mahmoud finishing up. That was such a bad shot that Clemson wasn't in position to rebound. Mahmoud had half a dozen in this matchup a year ago, and he's matched that so far this afternoon. When you're getting position for defensive rebounds, you're not anticipating an air ball. And sometimes <laughs> when that air ball occurs, the offense really helps him. And that time Perry called, I think, for the second contact. I think Perry's going to come out of the game because he's the guy who takes this bad shot. It's almost he's going to claim it's a pass, and then he commits the foul on the other end. <laughs> it's going to be hard to score a lot of points when you're taking those kind of shots, but Spalding bails him out. Then Perry picks up the foul, so Snyder is back in the game. First on Perry, fourth on his team. Tigers holding at five team fouls here in the opening half as we reach the five-minute mark. And Louisville drops back into the zone. Reed's thought about it. Mitchell makes it. That makes him what, like one for nine? Mitchell had the better look. Give Reed credit for recognizing that. Tigers up by a half a dozen, and that is their biggest lead of the afternoon. Clemson defense has been really solid. Like that right there. Oh, and boy, gives Spalding credit for the quick recovery. Adele from long range. No answer, but Spalding follows, and boy, he's done great in this sequence. He didn't score against the Tigers last year, and he's come in and gotten three quick field goals since returning to action. Two of them on offensive rebounding plays. Reed has Sutton defending. Mitchell can create his own shot too, tried to, but Spalding was right there and giving credit for the block. He's at 30 on the season. Well, you eventually have to hit some threes and maybe score close too, but that could be tough against the Cardinals. Our Coyote Tractor Player of the Week is Virginia star Ty Jerome. He scored a career high 31 points to lead the number eight Cavs to a 59 58 win over Boston College last Saturday. Jerome shot 11 out of 17 from the floor, six out of nine from three point range. He converted all three of his free throw attempts while playing a career high 37 minutes. Jerome tallying 19 of the Cavaliers' 29 second half points, and he added five rebounds and two assists. And Dan, you and West Durham will see him in person on Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, Syracuse and Virginia among the games we will have for you that night. It also includes Boston College heading to Chapel Hill. Back action here, Tigers have led by as many as six. Had four lead changes so far. And Deng Adele coming off an 18-point effort last year against the Tigers. Answers right there. And that's a tough shot by Adele, and I think that's been Louisville's problem today. They have not been able to get very many easy shots. One reason is they've turned it over nine times already. That's a double dribble. And an opening half in which Dante Grantham has scored just a couple of points. The Tigers have now given it up six times. Clemson averages about 12 and a half a game. Louisville playing with that little bit smaller lineup, Sutton in the game, instead of Mahmoud. Spalding on Sim, strong to the basket. I'm telling you, he does not look like he's a big muscular guy, but when he gets the ball to the basket, he knows how to score. He was one of the few guys doing anything Friday a week ago when they lost a lopsided game against Kentucky, but he had a double-double. He's getting close to double figures here, scoring the first half. Other end, Grantham, no. And Cardinals with Grantham doing some nice work. Got it back from Sims. Oh, you got to shoot the ball over top of him. Grantham waited too long. I mean, he's got a seven-inch height advantage against Quentin Snyder. You just have to rise up and shoot the short jump shot. Opportunity lost there for the Tigers. Cardinals trying to give us our fifth lead change here in the opening half.
Down to five on the shot clock. Spalding. And we'll get a bailout from DeVoe. Now Clemson has a great opportunity here, and that's like four feet from the basket. Grantham hesitates, and you just can't do that. you got to go right up and shoot the short jump shot by hesitating. He allowed a couple more Louisville players to get back, so when he missed the shot, Clemson was not able to get the offensive rebound. If he shoots it right away, Sims was right there and could have secured the offensive rebound. Six-team foul against Clemson. And now you saw Mike Eads. Now I think what we're seeing here in the last couple of possessions is Clemson really paying for Thomas to have those two personal fouls. Spalding is getting whatever he wants inside. And making an 8-0 run for Louisville. We'll get the goal 10 there. Credit B.J. King with the bucket. And Cardinals back in front, our fifth lead change. Brad Brownell, he's seen his team have, I think it's fair to say, maybe it's worst offensive half this season. And almost a pick six right there, but it's been a very streaky kind of half for Clemson. They started three for 17, then they hit seven to 12, and now they've missed their last three or four. Brad Brownell with a timeout to burn uses it. David Paget has a team that's been quite streaky so far this year. They've been known for going on runs. A lot of the credit to that goes to the fact they're an up-tempo team, but so far this year, Louisville's been that way, but not necessarily today. Let's give you a look at some of the ACC headlines. Lots of news happening around the league. Tough one for Notre Dame. Bonzi Colson, their fine All-America forward. Expected to miss eight weeks of game action with a left foot fracture he suffered in practice. Meanwhile, as per usual, ACC teams rank right up there. This Clemson team, one of six that the conference has in the top 25. And it was big upset on Tuesday night. A couple of big ones in the ACC. Florida State that 81-80 thriller at home against number 12, North Carolina. Georgia Tech knocking off number 15 Miami by 10 at a game they trailed big early and remember back uh, late in December no one saw that one coming as Boston College took down then number one Duke all those wins I don't know that Florida State beat North Carolina and Tallahassee is really all that big an upset but the key factor there is all those wins were secured by the home team it's tough to win on the road in this league shot clock at five five track just into the game for Mitchell uh, front can't get the bounce and flying into the rebound, Dwayne Sutton. Clemson hadn't scored in over three minutes. Another long drought for the Tigers. But as you mentioned, that's the kind of thing that the Louisville defense is able to produce. Earlier in the game, the Tigers went nearly six minutes without a, any points. Oh, wow. Oh, trying to extend it to uh, better than the 8-0 run they're on, but nothing doing that time out front for Snyder. Sims gets behind the cards, and he finishes underneath. And that's a problem when everybody stands around on offense and you miss a long, long shot. That creates a perfect opportunity for the, your opponent to get out and run. Badly needed basket for Clemson. Mistake by Louisville created the opportunity. Oh, and Reed taking it away from Kane. DeVoe, the feed. And the Tigers will keep it. And you see the differential. Shot clock to game clock. And the shot clock reset that time because Louisville possessed the ball before throwing it back in. If they just tip it, then that's not a possession. But when you grab the ball, that's possession, and so the shot clock reset. And Sims, he's running down the court with his hand up saying, throw me the ball, throw me the ball. And then when they threw it to him, he dropped it. DeVoe from downtown. And the battle inside, it'll go Louisville's way, was just under five seconds on the clock. Coming up at the break, we've got the Hardys Halftime Report. Dan and I will discuss the conference leading into the second week, plus scores, highlights, and stats, all on the Hardys Halftime Report. And David Padgett with a timeout to burn. We'll go ahead and use that. So, again, I, I thought I was sounding intelligent off the top of the telecast, noting each of these teams pushes 80 points a game. Uh, nowhere near that as our pace uh, arrives here close to the half. Well, David Padgett just called the timeout, but he also inserted Ryan McMahon into the game. So you can be pretty certain that whatever he's drawn up there, McMahon is going to be involved in some way, either as the decoy or as the shooter. 4.9 seconds, plenty of time to get the ball up the court and get a good shot. 
Well, this year we have the ACC three-point challenge presented by Mellow Mushroom. As you can see before the game, we were diligently preparing for our telecast. And, well, Dan getting in some work. If only back in the day when he wore the uniform of the Wahoos, he could knock him down like that. If only they had the three-point line. Well, maybe not. But nonetheless, it's a free download in your app store. And you can play as your favorite ACC team. And, again, we know what team Dan was playing for. Let's see if a three will happen before the break here. And Snyder gives the old college try, but that is how we arrive at halftime, right where we started. Significantly lower scoring than we thought. A couple of teams trying to move on an ACC play without a conference loss. 23 all at the break. Gatorade. Win from within. By your Carolina Ford dealers. And by Bojangles. It's bow time. As you know, Clemson University has a very deep military history. They actually have a scroll of honor here. It names the Clemson graduates killed in military action. Really a wonderful memorial to that here on this campus. Second half begins. And, well, just like the first half, an impacting play down low on the defensive end. Thomas has those two personal fouls, though, for Clemson, and Louisville goes right after it. Mitchell for a Tiger team that... They're now 1 for 12 from beyond the three-point arc. And issues just like that in the opening half. So 12 turnovers for Louisville, but 11 missed threes for Clemson. And Louisville is the team doing the job getting the ball on the inside. Thomas has to be very careful, so the Clemson Tigers are vulnerable on the interior right at the moment. Quinton Snyder off that teardrop runner now with five in the game. DeVoe out front. Boy, a tough shooting day for this Clemson team. 37% on the season beyond the arc, and the other night up at BC, they were 35%. I think if Thomas finds himself matched up against Adele inside and there's no help, Thomas has to make a play on the inside. Yes, DeVoe was open, but I think it's an easier shot for Thomas over Adele on the interior. Williams got the start, didn't see him much for the rest of that first half, and he can't hit from out front. Well, Williams was three or four shooting threes in the Indiana game. Otherwise, he's four for 23 on the season. I'm not sure that that's a great shot for him. Grantham having issues coming off a career high in scoring. But... Well, Grantham's now one for eight. He has only scored two points. He does have six rebounds. Cardinals playing the patient game and playing it quite well, I, I think, based on if you watch some of their games this year they like to get it up and down and there's Adele but they have finally found a rhythm on offense and I think it helped them going inside to Spalding and Mahmoud that sort of settled everybody down and now with Elijah Thomas with those two personal fouls the Tigers are a little bit tentative and there dang Adele picks up the foul Adele picking up his second personal. So you saw Adele hit that second field goal the game moments ago. But one of the reasons scoring has been down, the two leading scorers have been held way down so far. And another reason that the Tigers have struggled to put points on the board is they have yet to get to the free throw. And these, in fact, will be our first free throws of the day. For an 81% shooter, Shelton Mitchell, the Tigers the other night, 18 out of 20 from the foul line. Clemson is one of those teams that makes more free throws than their opponents attempt. So a big part of their offense is getting to the line and converting, and they simply haven't been able to do that today. Mitchell, though, cutting into what was Louisville's largest lead of the afternoon. The Tigers have been up by as many as six. That was in the opening half of play. And again, Thomas, I think, has to be very, very careful here. Malik Williams, a freshman, and not that time, but the putback try, and I do believe they're going to say that V.J. King was in the act, and he will head to the line and shoot two. Early in the game, it was the Clemson Tigers getting the job done on the offensive boards, but recently it has been Louisville. In fact, Spalding sort of got the game turned around on the offensive end for the Cardinals by getting a couple of offensive rebounds and converting them. And the first free throw of the day for the Louisville team going down. Cardinals 74% as a team. Tigers 75% and V.J. King at 66 on the season from the line. His dad was a great Division II player at Indiana 
Pennsylvania was a thousand point scorer during his career. And King that time one out of two, the sophomore out of Cleveland. Not only is there an Indiana of Pennsylvania, there's a California in Pennsylvania. Yes, there is. And those two are rivals. There's a university California PA right there. Elijah Thomas, two fouls in the opening half, limited his minutes, and he can't finish that time. I think that's a good place for Clemson to go. He missed the shot, but I think they can do some work inside. The get back to Spalding, oh. and Elijah Thomas says, Spalding, you will be rejected and you will like it. But that is a dangerous play by Elijah Thomas. A very nice job by Louisville to get the ball to Spalding, and this is a heck of a move. And Thomas able to block that shot without following him with the body. That's an impressive athletic play by Elijah Thomas. Thomas coming in, 35 blocks in the season, a good number, but pales in comparison to Mahmoud of Louisville, who began the ninth with 55. Snyder that time fed to King. Good job by Dane. And Star with the steal. Just checked in, and he picks up another steal on the season. Other end it goes, and there's another big affecting a shot. Now, Tom and uh, Williams just stood there. At some point, you have to wonder when the Tigers are going to be completely frustrated because they just can't do anything on the offensive end. And Louisville has been able here recently to play a little bit in transition. That time they were able to get back and get a real nice shot opportunity inside before the Tigers could set the defense. Spalding leads all scorers with 10, and that time give King credit. Thomas, though, able to keep it, but no reset. Oh, and the backdoor look, but a good defensive recovery that time for Louisville. Tigers will keep with nine on the shot clock when we come back to Little John Coliseum. Other ACC action for you this afternoon in Blacksburg, Virginia Tech trying to bounce back against a pit team starting at times five freshmen. That's a Virginia Tech team that desperately needs a win, particularly at home. You see the Panthers knocking down a couple of three-point shots, but the Hokies going inside to carry Blackshear Jr. and the Virginia Tech Hokies lead it by 11 in the second half in a game they have to have. Louisville finished the first half on an 8-2 run in the last 4-22. In the first 4-11 of this half, they've outscored the Clemson Tigers 7-2. So now we have a 15-4 run from the end of the first half to the beginning of the second. The Tigers have yet to score a field goal in the second half. Spalding got a rejection, and then Thomas with the extra effort. They're going to finish in time. That's the way the game started for the Tigers. Offensive rebounding and scoring, and it started that way with Elijah Thomas. They've got to get him more involved. And this crowd near capacity here in Little John Coliseum. The students have yet to get back, but starting to make some noise. Adele defended by Scara. And Grantham flies in for the rebound. Dante Grantham averaging better than seven boards a game. Adele is much more of a scorer than a shooter. And Spalding picks up his second personal. The Tigers have done a nice job on the board. You see Spalding with the block shot, but because he goes for the block, nobody blocks out Graham, and so, excuse me, blocks out Thomas. And Thomas is able to finally get the basket. Remember, Elijah Thomas is playing with two personal fouls. Thomas, eight points to lead the Tigers in scoring so far. And now Louisville goes back to Paget and Spalding in the game at the same time. Tigers like to move that ball, like right there, and Reed. Two on the shot clock, carries. Really nice ball movement. Tied once again, just like we were at the half. And Mahmoud hung up by Thomas, far from the hoop. Tigers have the arrow, they'll get it back. That's now 14 turnovers for Louisville. Remember, they come in averaging 11.6 turnovers a game, so fewer than 12 turnovers a game. 
They already have 14. And that's got a concern, David Padgett, but he's got to be happy that the game, he's on the road, it's tough to win on the road in the ACC, and they're tied. Cardinals may need to rely on the fact they force better than 14 turnovers a game. Of course, a lot of that comes when they try to play the up-tempo 94 feet kind of action. Nothing doing for DeVoe, so for the most part, it has been a rough day so far from the outside for Clemson. And there Thomas picks up his third personal foul. And that's what I mean about Dang Adele. Brad Brownell is upset, but Adele that time didn't settle for the pull-up jump shot. He takes the ball to the basket, and Thomas, Thomas just has to leave him go. Thomas has to understand his importance to the team and just let that one go. You got help behind you. Let somebody help you out. I've heard very few a media session this year with Brad Brownell talking, in which at some point he hasn't mentioned Elijah Thomas needs to stay out of foul trouble. And as things continue with the ACC, that will continue to be a talking point. Deng Adele, 80% from the line. And, of course, this battle... Cardinals have gone three minutes without scoring. Tigers trying to continue this run that's put him in front. Seven-footer on Reed. He lines up at 6-3, but he can knock him down with the best. And a timeout is called by David Padgett. He has seen his team have their lead that was close to a half dozen in the second half. Go away. Clemson back in front, 35-32. Throwing it down, Dante Grantham style. Tigers trying for a 14th win in their 15th game on the season. the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Precom Sports, also streaming live now on the ACC.com and on the official ACC mobile app. Now, as we noted earlier, half a dozen teams in the top 25 out of the conference, including the Clemson Tigers at number 25. You have to go all the way back to January of 2010, the last time a ranking number in the top 25 sat next to the Clemson Tigers, and that's presented by your Honda dealers of the Carolinas. Back to action coming out of the timeout called by Louisville, which leaves them with a couple and scrappiness on the defensive end, but this time the arrow pointing the Cardinals well. Well, while we were away, I got to tell you, with the cold weather, every outside green is frozen in the greater upstate of South Carolina, but this guy probably felt like he was putting on a frozen green. Will it go for $10,000? It does! Wow! The roar of the crowd was as loud as we've heard so far today, Dan. Maybe we'll hear it a little louder as the Tigers continue this run. Danny Dell. And that's going to be a shot clock violation. So that is another turnover for Louisville. They now have 15 turnovers, and they have only made 14 field, goal, field goals. Their defense is what's keeping them in the game. Dante Grantham, Sheldon Mitchell, Gabe Debo among them. They are four for 25. So the Louisville defense has been able to cut off a significant part of the Clemson offense. This guy has been the Clemson offense, particularly in the second half, although he misses there. Thought he might be feeling it, Dad, with 11 point A, but on the other end, Anas Mahmoud. And I take it inside and he'll head to the line. David Scarra gets him. And the Louisville Cardinals chance to get a little bit closer, but not as close as this. What do you think he was thinking as he saw it go through? 10,000 bucks in the early part of a new tax year at that. With Dan Bonner, Pete Hannity with you back at Little John Coliseum. Well, the Clemson Tigers and Louisville Cardinals, it's been a grinder so far. Our game summary, though, and as you've noted, the turnover story big for the Cards. And Clemson with those 10 steals, they've been able to get out and go. But the Louisville defense has been pretty good, too. They've held Clemson to under 31% shooting in the second in, in the game, under 30% in the second half. And this is a Louisville team that in watching them on tape before this game, I wasn't so sure that they were a grinded out kind of team, but they have been a grinded out kind of team today. 
Anas Mahmoud came into the ball game 50% from the line, and we just saw why, so it stays a three-point Clemson lead. Tigers trying for just their second win all time against Louisville, granted in just seven meetings. A feed Donnell. And in traffic, the transfer in from Michigan, the graduate student converted. That was great help by Dwayne Sutton to block the first shot. And I'm not sure Clemson touched that, so they turn it over again, that's 16. And then Donnell had to make a very difficult shot. Nice screen out top, and Donnell gets the ball inside, and Sutton just knocks it away. And somehow Donnell got that up with his left hand. Donnell is not a guy known for his scoring inside. See, and the foul trouble has really been a problem in the game. They've had to alternate Mahmoud and Spalding. Elijah Thomas still out for Clemson. So the big guys on each team have struggled a little bit with the fouls. DeVoe the kick, Grantham the shot, and the rebound taken down by Ray Spalding. So Dante Grantham continuing, just like several of his teammates. Well, Clemson's two for 17 yeah. from beyond the three-pointer. And he's remained cold from the outside, a continuation he doesn't want. McMahon out there, good shooter for the Cardinals. Into the paint it goes, and a little turnaround, and that has worked about as consistently as anything offensively for the Cardinals. Spalding now has a dozen. It's really a nice job with McMahon throwing it inside because you can't help off McMahon, but I think when Spalding gets the ball inside, Clemson has to double-team him. There's no way Donnell can guard him one-on-one -on -one in there. Shelton Mitchell goes past the big fella, finishes, and foul. That is some kind of drive by Sheldon Mitchell. He did a great job using his body to protect himself from the shot blocker. Gets a step, uses his body, extends his arm. This is a very, very difficult shot. And that's four on Spalding. And Spalding has been their best offensive weapon inside. So as you see, he heads to the bench. What kind of factor will that be for Louisville as Mitchell converts the three-point play and matches Clemson's biggest lead of the afternoon at six points? One of the problems with having shot blockers, that means they try to block the shots, obviously, and lots of times when you do that, you pick up fouls. Tigers picking up the pace offensively. They're up to 32% from the field. And Defoe, the step in. And McMahon will be called for the personal, and quite frankly, probably not the worst thing, because Defoe could have thrown it down to bring the house down. It's just a bad pass by Mahmoud. And what the officials are discussing is whether or not that is a flagrant one foul, the old intentional foul. If he grabs on to him prevent, to prevent him from getting down the court to get a basket, then that's a flagrant one foul. That's why the old, that's flagrant one foul, as we used to call an intentional foul, and they don't call it an intentional foul anymore just because they want to complicate things. Yeah, so the Mike question here is, does, does McMahon grab onto him to try to prevent him from getting the easy basket? And if the, in the judgment of the officials he did, then that's a flagrant one foul. That's nah, going to be a tough one, I think, to call as a flagrant one, but we noted our officiating crew that... Nah, it's a really good officiating it crew, really so is. they're going to go and take a look, and that's one of those things that it's a judgment call on the part of the official. See Jamie Lucky with A.J. Desai, and we noted Mike Eads. Is In a flagrant one on foul, group. you have to have contact no, that is excessive and or unnecessary. So just, a common foul. just a regular foul. But so again, on those breakaways, you can't grab the guy and prevent him from getting away. And McMahon actually did commit a very good foul because he didn't grab him. He bumped him, but... So I think that was a very uncommon foul. Nice no. job. And I think he bumped him so much as just to try to get the ball back. He thought he still had a chance of that. For Louisville now, five as a team. Oh, I, th beat. I think he knew what he was doing. He was trying to prevent him from getting down there, and he did it very well. Then, he, then he's an excellent actor. Better actor than uh, than we are. Three team fouls on the Tigers against those five for Louisville. Let's see if they try to find Donnell back door again. It looked like what DeVoe was setting well, up. They for. missed him. Mm -hmm. Shaken big by Mitchell, but nowhere to go. Now 
Reed with seven on the shot clock off balance, and he'll head to the line. Dwayne Sutton will be called for his first personal. David Padgett very concerned. Here's Donnell. Watch Donnell here, and then he's going to go to the basket. But part of the problem is there's DeVoe, but can he even see Donnell? And the answer to that question is no, because Mahmoud is out there with his hands up. Tiger team with lots of good free throw shooters, and that's the best of the group. Marquise Reed, 84%. Brad Brownell was asked, I think last year when the numbers really started to come up in the line, about are they practicing more from the line? He goes, honestly, we're just recruiting better free throw shooters. <laughs> well, years ago when Clemson was absolutely dreadful from the free throw line, I asked then head coach Oliver Purnell what you do about that, and that was his solution. He said you recruit better free throw shooters. <laughs> By the way, Reed matching his total against Louisville last year. Leads away with 13 points, a 12-2 Clemson run. Cardinals trying to cut into what is the biggest Tiger lead of the game at eight points, but nothing doing that time for Mahmoud. Mitchell with McMahon defending. McMahon did a nice job moving his feet. If you're Louisville, you know you got help back there in the mood, but you still don't want to get beat out front. Screen by Donnell freeing Mitchell, but that time a little bit too wild. Snyder, the feed inside, and Sutton, who's come home to play at Louisville after transferring in from UNC Asheville, finishing. And I think Louisville's really good in transition, and if you're Clemson, that time a bad shot leads to an easy basket for Louisville. If you're the Clemson Tigers, you have to make sure that the kind of shots you're taking on offense allows you to get back and play defense five on five against Louisville. <laughs> Nadell went flying away from Reed. Well, that time, knocked away. Good job by Sutton. Snyder finds Adell, and he finishes. And two quick buckets and a Bad shots, game. turnovers allow Louisville to get out and run in transition, and that may be just what the Cardinals need to get their confidence back. Brad Brownell is really angry. You can see just how comfortable Louisville is when transition begins, and they do a great job finishing, as we just saw. Timeout on the court called by the Clemson head coach. His team's lead cut from eight down to four. Back after a word from your local ACC station. And the Clemson Tigers up by four on the Louisville Cardinals at 42-38. to 38. And time now for our Bojangles fan of the game. And when a guy makes a putt for 10 grand, he automatically seals the deal for Bojangles fan of the game. The Tiger was more excited than he was. I don't think so. <laughs> Let's face it, that guy has suddenly made a whole bunch of new friends, and his neighbors will now say hello to him like never before. <laughs> it's bow time, so that means we have just checked on our Bojangles fan of the game. $10,000 wealthier. And Brand Brown now gets Elijah Thomas back in the game. Let's see how long he can stay in there. With those three fouls, of course, on the other side. Ray Spaulding has four for Louisville. The feed down low, and there's Sutton scrapping. Able to get it to Mahmoud. Another turnover by the Clemson Tigers. A bad shot and two turnovers in three possessions, and that has allowed Louisville to climb back in this game. Looked like Clemson was on a little bit of a roll. Mahmoud taking it right to Thomas with those three fouls. There's DeVoe. And Mahmoud, Mahmoud has down. developed a really good hook shot. Not that time. Oh, my. Ooh. Thought he had the seam inside of one of the best shot blockers in the country. Instead, he goes underneath. How did he keep his pivot foot in there? It looked like he was doing a split. Double-digit game for Elijah Thomas. Well, he's got 10 points. He's got eight rebounds, and he's barely played. Snyder over Reed. Boy, a strong move to the bucket. That's what Quentin Snyder's been doing more of this year, attacking. And that's that's just an outstanding play by Snyder because Reed was in excellent defensive position. Would help the Clemson cause if Grantham could get going a little bit, particularly from the perimeter. He had 11 against the Cardinals a year ago, but relatively quiet so far, but not that guy. 39% beyond the arc, Marquise Reed, and he's built his point total. Out to 15. That's good movement by Reed. He was able to step right into that one. And another rejection by Thomas and Grantham. 
doing a good job to get it back over the Tigers' way. That was really a good, strong play by Thomas and then Grantham with a great hustle play. Third block of the game for Elijah Thomas. Now I think that's a really good play by Snyder to get the ball in there against the guy in foul trouble, but just a tremendous play by Thomas to avoid hitting him with the body and blocking the ball. Based on our earlier pace, you noted this was going to be a 47-37 game. I'm happy to report, I think we're going to exceed that. Thomas putting it on the floor. And Mahmoud got lucky there. He reached in and got away with it. And then Sutton rejecting Grantham. Snyder doesn't have the numbers. They'll get DeVoe for the block. Now, see, I don't think that's a bad foul by DeVoe either because Louisville had an advantage opportunity. And here Grantham spins in the lane, and Sutton, Sutton is one of those guys who does a little bit of everything. Pretty good defender. A pretty good shooter. At six feet five, 200 pounds. He's big enough that he can bother a guy like Grantham. And he just did. Two personals on DeVoe. Tigers now with four team fouls. Louisville holding on six. Sutton almost lost his footing. Gang Adele. Snyder finds the open man, and Sutton brings it. Wayne Sutton, 36% beyond the arc as the day began. Just the guy we're talking about. Sutton can do a little bit of everything for you. Good defensive play down on the one end and then hits a big three. That's only the second three-point basket of the game for Louisville. Teams are combined for five made three-pointers. Once again, Snyder, that time from behind Scora, and he'll pick up his second. Now, Louisville does not force as many turnovers as, say, the Louisville team did five years ago. But what they do now is block shots. And that time, DeVoe thought he had an opening, but he took a little bit too long. And Louisville's able to get the block shot. That was Sutton again with the block. They get the block, and they're able to get out and run. So... Actually, it's Clemson's struggles on the offensive end that have greatly contributed to Louisville climbing right back in the game. And Snyder, what a solid game. We talked about his steadying influence, eight points, four rebounds, four assists. They get nine points. And an 88% free throw shooter usually gets it done just like that. So the Tigers are led by as many as eight here in the second half. But as you see, back to a two-point game. Louisville's really picked up the intensity on the defensive end of the court. Grantham dribbled right into a double team. Reed can hit him from anywhere. And Marquise Reed getting close to a 20-point ball game off a 17-point night up at Chestnut Hill on Wednesday. That was just what the Tigers needed to break some of that Louisville momentum. Thomas with those three fouls out there defending Adele, and boy, oh boy, ding Adele. That's why this guy's got a chance to play at the next level for a while. He just he just kept the ball, and as soon as he saw that Thomas had switched on to him, then he decided to make a move. So Adele, who, like the other guy, who leads the team in scoring, Grantham was playing the first half, picking it up, but so is Gabe DeVoe. He averages 11 and a half a game, and he... Drains that one, and just like that, Tigers back up by half a dozen. It's his first three of the game. And just the fifth made in 23 point attempts by the Tigers. That one's not going to count. They'll say the foul is on the floor. Tigers do like to hit the three. Marquise Reed can show them the way. Any ball game. Brad Brownell, he might be smiling eventually by the end of this. ACC basketball is being brought to you by Geico, saving people money for over 75 years. By Food Lion, raising standards without raising prices. How refreshing. And by your local Chevy dealers. Clemson Tiger is trying to protect their home court. They've had great success here on Blemish so far this season. And, well, so far today, all the home teams are leading. And it's been a good place to play, as it normally is in most conferences so far in the ACC. Home teams 12 and 3. Clemson. Inside of the under four we go. Interestingly enough, both Louisville and Clemson have been victors as the visitor. 
foul will be called. Of course, the Clemson bench to our left one of the travel, but Shelton Mitchell, who picked one up moments ago, has that look on his face that indeed he just picked up his second. So a year ago, Brad Brownell saw his Tiger team lose six ACC games by one possession. Well, the other night, they hoped they might have exercised some of that with a tight win at Boston College in which they saw a 15-point halftime lead go away, but they won by four. But here is V.J. King trying to bring Louisville to right there within four down and just keep him right here in the ball game and another tight one. And now seven points in the game for the sophomore out of Cleveland. Given the time left in the game, I think that Elijah Thomas with those three fouls doesn't have to worry uh, so much about fouls on the defensive end. He's got to avoid him setting illegal screens. But Spalding does have four fouls, so you can go right after him. And that's what Thomas does. And Spalding defends and comes away with it. Chance to now make it a one possession game. That's really good. Cardinals. Really good defense by Spalding. He of the four fouls, keep in mind. So that was about as aggressive as he could be. This has been a gritty defensive effort by Louisville here as they try to battle back in the game. King. Oh, that's a tough shot. You just can't defend that. That's a McDonald's All America coming out of high school, and you see why. Down to a two point Clemson lead. Seven points in the game for King. Clemson has been much better when they've been able to get movement on the offensive end. It's really been a signature there throughout the season. DeVoe shot clock number 10. Another turnover. And that allows Louisville to get out and run. And the flush by Dang Nadell and Brad Brownell. I thought the Tigers coach had called a timeout. Well, A.J. Desai did, but Brad Brownell didn't call a timeout. He was standing up yelling at his team. And besides, Brad Brownell is not allowed to call a timeout when the ball is live. Has to be one of his players. Take another look at that last Louisville play. Well, ball's dunked in the basket, and right there, it's a dead ball when it goes through. And the officials thought Brad Brownell was calling a timeout, but he wasn't. We were tied at 23 at the break, and <laughs> yes, alas, <laughs> the ball came across midcourt toward him, so Brad Brownell using his third timeout. Louisville on a 6-0 run as to why we are back even at 53 apiece. In the second half, it became the Marquise Reed show because a guy who can fill it up with the best of them in this league has been making it happen with a little bit of excitement and a little bit of flair. Well, Reed is really the only guy for Clemson to be effective from that beyond the three-point arc. He's three for five. But he has been a big factor. He's got 19 points in the game, come in, and came in as Clemson's leading scorer. And as a result, Reed's effort today are Chevy performance of the game. Brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. 19 points, 7 out of 14 from the field, and a couple of assists for the native of the Baltimore and Washington, D.C. areas. And well, here's a guy who has found a home here at Clemson after beginning his career at Robert Morris, where he was the freshman of the year in his conference up there. Louisville's on a 6-0 run because Clemson has either turned it over or taken a tough shot. Reed. And inside Thomas, they're going to get him coming over the back. That is a really good job by Dang Adele. Spalding went after the block, but Adele left himself in position for that rebound. When Reed makes the move and you see Spalding come over, you figure, okay, there's a pretty good chance. But Adele, right there in the middle of your screen, blocks out. That is a key play. Dang Adele back to the free throw line. Two out of two in the game, 80% on the season. Front end of the one and one goes down. In this game, again, a Clemson team that likes to get to the free throw line. Just six attempts there, perfect. And Louisville now eight out of 11. So for as much of a kind of grinded out game with uh, lots of contact, we haven't seen as many free throws as you might normally see. But the Cardinals retake the lead. And that is our second lead change of this second half and our seventh of the game. 
Now Clemson really needs to get a good opportunity, and they haven't had one the last four or five possessions. It's really good defense. Nice feed, nice idea. Defoe and Thomas finishing inside. And we're tied back up at 55. Well, Thomas caught that one. He's now got 12 points. Had just two points and five boards against Louisville a season ago, but obviously in a much different role. Another down-to-the-wire game for the Clemson Tigers in ACC play. And knocked away that time, Reed doing a good job with Grantham for You know, if you're Adele, you either have to rise up and take that shot or not leave your feet. Adele got, Adele got himself up in the air, and that was a very poor pass to Spalding. 18 turnovers in the game for this Louisville Cardinal squad. As we approach a minute to play in regulation. Mitchell, step back. And there is Spalding on the rebound. David Padgett wants to talk it over. You know, it's uh, quite the journey for the interim head coach at the age of 32, among the three youngest in Division I. And again, games like this, he'll probably get used to as the uh, next couple of months wear on. Well, I'll get gray hair. Nice job by Clemson. That's good ball movement. We talked about Clemson early in the game, wanting to get the ball inside. That time, some dribble penetration, and then nice passes. Brad Brownell now. He's looking at it. If his team fouls, then Louisville's going to the line. So one way or the other, he's going to get the, his team is going to get the ball back, regardless of whether Louisville scores or not. The well, folks coming up on Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. Some of you are going to see Jerome Robinson and the BC Eagles face off with Joel Berry and the number 12 Tar Heels in North Carolina. Others will get to see Jim Beheim and the Syracuse Horns take the road to Charlottesville. The number eight Virginia Cavaliers wait. For the ACC Network TV game schedule, visit accnetwork.tv. And remember, select ACC Network games or stream live for free on the official ACC mobile app. You're going to be there in Charlottesville for that ball game. And a matchup that I think could say a lot about both teams when they get together. Two really good defensive teams. And we're talking about two really good defensive teams here as well. And I think the defense has been a big key in this game. Louisville has done a great job forcing Clemson into tough opportunities, particularly here in the second half. What do you think David Padgett has set up coming off the inbound? I think you set up something where you take the ball to the basket, particularly Quinton Snyder or Dang Adele, and then you let your other guys go rebound the ball. Plenty of time still on the shot clock. The Louisville team that, mind you, has given it up nearly 20 times. And Adele has it knocked away. The scramble and Thomas. Oh, my. And it's not an over and back. So now the shot clock is off. And now they can hold it for the last shot. They do have one timeout remaining. Yeah, but you don't want to call a timeout because that lets Clemson set the defense. You already had a timeout. Run the same play. Snyder might have waited long enough. He's going to go. Snyder for the win. Overtime here in Little John Coliseum. It'll be the first overtime ball game for either team this season, and it comes early on in ACC play. Great but, defensive stop. Uh, they make a great defensive stop, and then Thomas just wants to get rid of the ball. You know, you don't have to be in that big a panic. Nice job by Louisville, and again, Louisville had a timeout, but they didn't want to let Clemson set the defense, but I think it's possible that Snyder waited too long to get going. We told you to buckle up at the start. Hope you're still fastened in. We've got the OT just ahead. And it'll be a shot clock violation, so one apiece in the ball game in that category now. A really, really good play by V.J. King. And that's a great defensive stand by Louisville. Clemson trying to drive the ball, not able to do it. Clemson had two really good defensive stands at the end of regulation. Oh, and there's Reed on the steal. King to beat. And he'll head the line. How about the quickness of Marquise Reed? 
What an opportunistic play by Reed to recognize that Louisville's a little bit off balance, comes from behind and steals the ball. And then he is really good in the attack. Give King his first foul. The 84% free throw shooter Reed goes to the line. He came into the game tied with DeVoe for their lead with 21 steals. And Today he has been very active defensively, and he puts the Tigers back in front. Now, Clemson's at the free throw line right now, but you mentioned they only took six free throws in regulation. Six for six, now eight for eight. But that's a big advantage for Louisville to keep Clemson off the line. 21 points for Marquise Reed, in case you're wondering. He got his career high earlier this season with 25 in their victory over South Carolina. Back to work goes Spalding, and we're going to get a held ball. And good inside defense, as it'll stay in the Louisville end. Keep in mind that both Spalding and Thomas have four personal fouls. And there's still a lot of time left in the game. If one of them were to foul out, that could have a big impact on this overtime. Snyder off the crossover, the lob, and Spalding not once, not twice. And there's Thomas. That's a tough lob. Spalding's in a big crowd there. It was hard for him to get the proper grip on the ball. Mitchell from downtown. This has not been there today for Mitchell from out beyond the arc. In fact, now he's two for 13 shooting overall, one for five from beyond the arc. Kind of been up and down this year beyond the arc for the Tiger Jr. out of Waxhaw, North Carolina. Other end, again, Louisville, a chance to tie or perhaps retake the lead. Adell, and that time I guess they're going to say DeVoe was last a touch. That, that's a break for Louisville. Adell a little bit out of control with his dribble. Let's take another look. This is just strictly a, an attempt to go one-on-one, -on -one, and he just dribbles the ball off the foot of Gabe DeVoe. DeVoe has done a nice job staying in front of DeVoe uh, to, for the most part. Another pick pocket by Reed. Goes around King. Wow. Timeout Louisville. The Tigers have jumped out to a four-point lead here in OT. Boy, you better be careful with the ball when Reed is in the neighborhood. He's got 23 points, and his scoring here in overtime has been based on his defense. Two steals in the last couple of possessions. Clemson with a four-point lead. Summary is the Tigers have opened up a four-point lead, and that 21 turnover is a big story while Marquise Reed having himself the day. We told you he's too shy of his career high in points. He also has a career high five steals in the game. Now, the five steals, in particular the last two, have really been key for the Clemson Tigers because the Tigers, Dante Grantham hasn't gotten off the mark offensively. Sheldon Mitchell hasn't gotten off the mark offensively. And we talked about Thomas. He has 12 points and 10 rebounds. And he's only played 20 minutes. Ryan McMahon has checked back in. It's him at the bottom right corner of your screen. You would suppose they'll try to maybe set something up for him beyond the arc. Instead, inside, the big fellow has been all reliable today. Ray Spalding working on a good scoring afternoon. Unless you double team him, that is almost an it's almost impossible to stop that shot. He is so smooth with it. Spalding 14 in the game came in averaging about 11. Grantham. Thomas over in the corner for DeVoe. And Gabe DeVoe. That's what they're used to seeing this season out of the senior from Shelby, North Carolina. Tigers by five. Well, you have to have confidence. And even though DeVoe hasn't shot the ball well today, he had a wide open opportunity and perfect rhythm out of the offense. King and a rejection. Out of bounds. Back over to the Tigers. And a good job by Reed to knock it off the body of McMahon. That's almost like a steal. That is a tremendous play by a couple of the Tigers. The Clemson defense really rising up here in the overtime. A tremendous block shot, and then you're right. Reed reaches for the ball and knocks it off McMahon. Clemson with seven block shots in the game, and Louisville comes in as the leading shot blocking team in the ACC. Cardinals have five so far in that category. Second in the nation in blocks. The kick out again, DeVoe. And another. 
It's enough to give a 32-year-old coach gray hair. The ball hadn't hit anything, and now he knocks down two in a row. He's in the double figures, 11 points. One of the untold stories of Clemson this year, there are five starters all averaging double figures in points. Spalding that time kissing off the glass. He's got 16 of the game, and a timeout is called by David Padgett. Eventually, you knew Gabe DeVoe might be able to knock one or two down. Well, these are carbon copies. Grantham drives the ball to the basket in a really nice play by Thomas. DeVoe catches it in perfect rhythm. That's the first one. And then the second one was exactly the same thing. There's DeVoe in perfect rhythm. He's now three out of eight beyond the arc, and Gabe DeVoe... Just as Dante Grantham has emerged this year, kind of changed his game. You could argue Gabe DeVoe has done the same for one. He's getting many more minutes than he has in the past. But he and Grantham, the two guys who were the faces of this program during the offseason, they had him go to the media day. They were the leaders. Still some guys who were getting used to the program, like Reed and Mitchell and so forth. But those two guys have really been good leaders, if nothing else. Uh, Dante Grantham uh, is a guy who has shown that he has figured out how to help his team even when he's not scoring. He's only got five points but he has 11 rebounds he has a couple of assists he has a steal and I think that's critical that shows your emergence as a player when you can do things to help the team even when you're not scoring in the overtime Clemson has been dominant so far but there's still plenty of time left here Louisville doing what you see a lot out of Cardinals teams trying to move this thing to 94 feet they had that spurt when they had a couple of fast break baskets midway through the second half I, I thought they might try to speed up the tempo uh, they're not really that kind of a team anymore. Maybe five years ago, but as we said, over the last few years, they've become more of a half-court but shot-blocking kind of team defensively. Grantham going to the hole, and that time Sutton will send it to the line. Now, even though that's the case, I think they're still better playing in transition on the offensive end. And here's Grantham. He has not had a lot of opportunities to take the ball to the basket. He got a step on Sutton outside. Grantham, one of three Tiger regulars who shoots better than 80% from the line this season. Plus, they've got DeVoe at 79%. As Scar, you saw, just checked back in. And as you said, Dante Grantham helping this team a lot of ways. Off a 23-point performance, he has just six points. And now it'll hold at that, but 11 rebounds in this contest. Point game, McMahon from downtown. That was huge from the left wing. Now Louisville has no timeouts left, but the officials are going to check and see whether or not that was a three. So Jamie Lucky heading over to the scorers table. Comes over. There's no question about that. I, I was wondering why they were even taking a look because that was almost close to what the NBA line would be. Ryan McMahon, he's really stepped up his role with his team. He missed early action in the season because of a broken rib, but comes off a 10-point game the other night against Pittsburgh, and well, you can tell he's a reliable guy for them. This is a helpful review for Louisville because they're out of timeouts. But McMahon, you know, that free throw that Grant the missed was a big miss because when you've got a weapon like McMahon, you're never out of the game. I believe as... Both Jamie Lucky and Mike Eads, our officials, stand at the scorer's table. And DJ King and the others wait. I wonder if they're looking at something other than in well, that situation. They might be looking at the clock. In fact, that's what they are doing. They're, they're sitting over there now with a stopwatch. So I'm mistaken. It's some sort of a clock issue. It's not whether or not it was a three. So, and if they've got the stopwatch out, that means they're trying to figure out how much time has elapsed. And as you see, with exactly one minute straight up, the clock is supposed to stop when the ball goes through the basket. And you see the reset to 58. Above one minute, and right. as we we're right on that fine line. And then, as a result, uh, Mike Eads just kind of tell us that that was what they did. Well, the clock is supposed to run unless it's a minute, you know, unless it's under a minute. It wasn't under a minute, and so they stopped it, and they weren't supposed to stop. Yep. 
they supposed to run free, and then from that ensuing moment on, once a made basket happens, and they're on. It's, it's, it's under the under time minute minute at one at minute, point. then it, the clock is supposed to still run. But again, that, that review and the length of that review really helps Louisville because they don't have any timeouts left. Now, Clemson has called a timeout. And so David Padgett, and again, you see he towers over most on his team, Brad Brownell. But, let me, let me ask you, how alert is that of the officials to recognize the ball goes all the way through and there's a minute left. Now, if there's 59.9, then you stop the clock. But how alert of the officials to notice that, wait a minute, there's still a minute and it has to be under a minute. That's just a great job by the officiating crew. That guy right there has been to the final four as an official, one of many in this league. I think the guy who actually noticed it was Jamie Lucky. And Jamie Lucky, an experienced and sage ref in his own right. And now they'll foul Mitchell. But here is the Clemson team of this latter part of the 2010s decade, if you will. The old days, you'd foul them, and you'd think you might come away with either two misses or only one out of two. Now you're fouling guys in the 80% or better range. Well, and even if he makes them, though, you're trying to foul early because you've got McMahon in the game. And what you're going to try to do, even if he makes both free throws, is to trade a three-point basket for two. And if you start fouling early enough, then you can you can cut into the lead. But here the thing is, you've got to make the three-point basket if he makes both of these free throws. Now, see, you're in business. You, know, you can still cut into the lead with just a two, although you'll certainly take the three. Just the second free throw missed by the Tigers in their 12 attempts in the game. King and Mitchell and now you got to foul right away see the strategy is you trade the free throws for the opportunity to score one more point on the offensive end you two free throws now he missed one so if you scored two you were in business but of course you have to score and an opportunity again for Mitchell to make this a three possession game or at least a full two possession game joins three other teammates in double figures now with 10 in the contest and that has been again the story game in and game out Tigers usually had four or five guys in double figure scoring two out of two and now it gets real tough for the Cardinals right, you gotta make it three you gotta make it three McMahon a rainbow Almost there you go with that one Clock will stop. Well, of course the clock stops. Uh, the clock will stop. I'm sorry. Play will be delayed, and I'm wondering why. And David Padgett tried to insert a sub during this <laughs> official timeout. And the clock stops in under a minute, but you can't substitute. Yeah. I think he was thinking it was the officials had called timeout due to an issue. But I was... After the clock stopped on the made basket, there was the delay, and I was trying to figure out what exactly it was, and see Mike Eads talking with A.J. Desai about it. Well, you can't substitute. Now, you can call a timeout to substitute, but Louisville doesn't have any timeouts. Now, that's a foul here in a hurry, and they will in a four-point game. So how about McMahon? <laughs> Made two Boy, really oh long contested threes. You know this is what they're going to do. I wonder how many seconds that was actually in the air. I mean, that was a big-time rainbow. <laughs> that was a rainbow. It sure was. DeVoe, his first free throw attempt of the ball game. He now has a dozen points. And again, as we told you, he's at 79%. He had seven in the game last year against Louisville, so... He has been more of a contributor this time around. Now, given the length of time you have left, even if he misses this one, you might want to come down and get a three. But certainly if he makes it, you have no choice. You have to shoot a three and make one. Right, so Louisville, if you're Clemson now, don't even worry about inside the three-point line. Tigers 14 out of 16 from the line in this game. Snyder will go to the hole and... Then they get the goal 10. Looked like another block initially for Thomas, but that'll be two points for Louisville. And you can substitute now because it, even though it counts as a made basket, it didn't go through the hoop. It's a goaltend. 
Boy, this is it. it. It hits the board. Why would you even go after this? And Mitchell fouled on the reach that time. So we will see Shelton Mitchell return to the line. So the other night they held on for a four-point win up at Boston College, making 18 out of 20 from the line. Significantly more made than even BC attempted. And this one is shaping up in slightly similar fashion in terms of their success, although the Cardinals have attempted just a few fewer free throws and the Tigers have as Mitchell knocks one down. Well, obviously you have to make free throws, but again, <laughs> if Louisville can make threes, they can still inch back in the game, trading three for two. Or I guess two for three is the better way to put that. Now you gotta get a three. And again, you don't worry if he drives the ball to the basket. And he will. Stays a two possession game, but now a four point difference with just over 11 ticks on the clock. It's so hard to get that into your head as a defensive player. The last thing you want to do is commit a foul on a guy who might get a three point play that way. If you make both the free throws, then forget about it. They, they can't catch up by trading back, trading points with you. Ray Spaulding lasted a long time in this game with four personal fouls, but he picks up his fifth, so he completes the day with 16 points to lead the Cardinals in that category and he also had 14 rebounds so for the second time in three games a double double for the junior from right there in Louisville and a rare miss for the fine free throw shooter Marquise Reed so still a two possession game Snyder Five seconds, McMahon. And that's going to do it here in Little John with 2.1 to go. It's an impressive win by Clemson. Brad Brown now obviously has great respect for Louisville. You could tell, though, in hearing him talk yesterday, he had significant added concern coming into what was a tight battle, but for the first time this season, Clemson picks up a victory, one in overtime, this one 74-69. to This is AC ba ACC basketball, an intense, hard-fought game. Nice job by Clemson to pull it out at the end. Well, the Clemson Tigers continue their best start in a long time and get to 3-0 in the ACC. Friends for highlights and must-see moments from this game and others, check out the ACC.com. Our next telecast on most of these ACC network stations, Tuesday, 8 o'clock Eastern, either Boston College at North Carolina or Syracuse at Virginia. Been a real pleasure today, Dan, sitting alongside of you and alongside of Dan Bonner, Pete Hannity saying so long. You've been watching coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference basketball on the ACC network and exclusive production of Raycom Sports.